Welcome everybody to Off Planet Radio, and I'm pleased today to re-welcome, after a, after a really long absence, um, somebody that you know, we always really enjoy having on the show and has contributed a sizable amount of uh, information, knowledge, experience, and insight into the worldview of what we do here at Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV, and... Um, uh, so I'm going to welcome back Dr. Shamil Asher. People have been asking me, why has it been so long since you've talked to Dr. Asher? My glib answer to that is that Dr. Asher and I have been waiting for the future to catch up with us, and it has. Shamil, welcome to the show. Uh, that's no kidding, man. Good to, good to hear your voice, and, and uh, this will be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have you yeah. back. It has been a long time, far too long. Yeah. yeah, it has. A lot of people have asked me uh, many times, <laughs> every single year, I get emails. Why Why don't you and uh, Randy do more shows? Your guys are really good together and all that stuff. And, and they like the one with Freeman, too. So yeah. yeah, yeah, we did that one, too. That was kind of the, kind of overlap. That was the one that we did on the NPCs, which, <laughs> wow. That kind of takes us back in time, too. We were doing the Triunity series, and this was, I guess, five years ago. And um, I remember, you know, we, we talked earlier about having to uh, patch this call together through phone lines again because of the irregularity that is Skype and um, that si- simulacrum show, too, that we did, which was the end of, of that, that series, the Triunity series, where we had just that incredible anomalous situation with the call where... It not only terminated, but it terminated and continued to loop eternally yeah. inside of the telephone system and over Skype. It was like it was frozen there and it couldn't terminate. Yeah, that was crazy. I remember that. That, so, that was really off the hook. Yeah, you know, we don't play well with technology. And so here we are in 2021, 19 months down the barrel of the program. And the world has changed incredibly in that time. It's clearly changed a lot from the last time that you and I talked. And it, um, when I look back on those conversations, and it's funny because it popped up in a search. So I went ahead and listened to the simulacra- Simulacrum show part two that we did, which was part the last part of the Triunity series. And where we were going even then was trending into the things that that we're now beginning to see play out in ways that I don't think... You know, here's the thing. This really is the the through-the-glass-darkly kind of thing, Shmuel, where we have a knowing, we have a sense, and we've talked about this, both of us have known for probably our whole lives that we lived in this spectacular mashup that is what I guess you call the end of the age, but never really knowing how it was going to play out, what the particulars were going to be, what what the mechanisms and the snares were for all this. And now here we are in 2021, and, you know, it's almost like they threw all the game pieces right out into the center of the table, and now we begin to see how the game plays running. Yeah, it's, well, you know, it's, uh, I can't say I didn't know it was wasn't coming. Yeah, I, I, I've known it was coming because, you know, if I strictly go by the Hebrew prophets and and understanding what they say, uh, I think better than a lot of people. I, I knew it was coming, and I understood how, uh, relatively how it was coming. We we always think we understand uh, prophecy, but then uh, you have to keep an open mind for it not to play out in the exact form of, mm-hmm. of, of that you made up in your own mind. You know, I think that's what most of these prophecy guys do, which is 
which is why when I got those warnings, uh, which I, I believe are, they're in the, um, my book, the one titled As It Was in the Days of Noah. Um, As in the Days of Noah. This right, plays so like, into a lot of your understanding of things. And of course, going back to the time that you spent in Tel Aviv with the, we'll say the, the real books, um, your understanding of that. Right. Yeah, well, in Judea anyway, but the, um, you know, like, uh, as I was saying, my, my book, the, as it was in the days of Noah, I line out uh, stuff that I've always known about basically based in uh, the Hebrew prophets, but, um, even learn from my grandfather how these things are going to happen. And, and we have to, you know, I always kind of looked and knew and understood. And then uh, that uh, these days were coming probably in, in my lifetime. I didn't, I wasn't one of those prophecy people. I didn't really, uh, I, I studied it, but I didn't teach it, um, you know, mainly because everybody has a tendency to turn into Benny Hinn somehow yeah. when they're talking about yeah. prophecy. So, you know, and my, my stick was, I teach about uh, the law, about the first law, the everlasting agreement, and that's pretty much everything revolves around that. So I really didn't stray away from that. But then in, uh, you know, right around 2014, I, I, I got, well, during, I think I told you in another, in another show we did, during Four Sabbaths, and, and these, these warnings that I, I got were, are in that, as it was in the days of Noah book. And uh, I reluctantly published them in that. And... Because it, it gives you, uh, if you, when you look at those prophecies uh, with now uh, having hindsight, so you, you know, all those years, you, me, we didn't have the, what we have now as hindsight. You know, now I can look back at uh, when this broke open for me in a bigger way, uh, starting out um, with the falling out I had with Michael Rood. And oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Gosh, Michael Rude, that goes back to my days on uh, Christian radio. I saw it, and then, and then uh, all these people came flooding from him to me, and I didn't expect it. And uh, that's how this uh, kind of got virtual online, for me anyway, because before that it was more analog uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but, <clears throat> you know, the prophecy thing was just something I... I kind of knew, stayed away from, and I didn't, you know, you don't believe it's really going to happen every time you're looking at all these things happening, but it's always keeps kind of dragging on and never comes to a culmination. And then, uh, you know, so you got, you got to just put on the back burner and say, yeah, you know, well, yeah, if it happens, it happens. Who knows when it's going to happen. Um, but, you know, you get to a point where <clears throat> now where we are, where I'm able to look back and say, okay, I see what happened in 2010 with me, anyway. And mm -hmm. I culminated in a seven-year period where in 2014, 2015, 2016, I was getting um, the same way I've always gotten interfaced with the Eternal One, the Father. Um, so I, I understood it was from Him, you know, but... <clears throat> excuse me. But... Um, You know, it, again, it was it, it, it borderline. It was really like prophecy. So I, I, I was like, all right, I, I see what this is, but I'm not going far and wide with it. You know, I'm just not going to do it. Um, and basically, what I got at that time was giving me direct information about what was coming, where it was coming from, how it was coming, and uh, much of the information out of the prophets in bits and pieces and different ways, not like you would read it when you read the prophets. So right, um, right. kind of like, I'm not going to say code, but kind of like if somebody just took, a, you know, a half of a sentence here and a half there, and that's how I get it. And, um, and I know how I'm prompted. So I was prompted to do the Land of Meat and Honey book, and I didn't want to do that. I put that off for a while. And, and I did that, and I, now, I, now I can look back. We, you and I, we can look back, and I can see that, okay, that started for what I believed was seven years of plenty. That's what I was mm -hmm, showing mm -hmm, you. Yeah. I think, I would say I think, I'm not sure that we're in seven years of, of plenty because of the sign of Jonah uh, uh, warning that I received from the Father before 
long before that happened in 2017. In fact, I had to be told by one other person who's a close student and friend of mine, who she was the only one I even showed that to, those four warnings. Uh, I didn't show it to anyone. I was told to show it to everyone, but I didn't. And um, I just, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be that guy. So I, I, I kept it. And actually, I totally forgot about them. And uh, sometime in 2017, she had called me up. It was a few months before that whole great American eclipse thing. Yeah. And she asked me about the eclipse. And what do you think about this? Do you think it's, it's, it's a sign uh, like, the, like the father told you it was coming? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she, she said, remember, you wrote it down. It was, it was what, you know, and I went, oh, yeah, hold on, let me go back and look at that. And, and I, I went back and read it all again because I put it out of my mind. And, uh, you know, for, for a lot of reasons, but, uh, I put it out of my mind and there it was right there. And I said, holy crap, this is that time. This actually has to be it. And then what blew my mind is as it happened, just before it happened, we were just inching up on, on really honing in on the Inaki encounter that, that I and uh, another friend of mine at the time have been working on for shit. 20 years, 15 mm-hmm, years. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, and we just couldn't nail down uh, these few last pieces until it was time. And then, boom, they all came to us. And we looked at it and we said, holy crap, look at this. And, and uh, that's why, that, as it was in a Days of Noah book, I think is important because at this time, like, uh, and I think you read it, uh, because uh, it's got the prophecies of Daniel's days in there and it's got the Days of Noah, which are important if you understand what they're for and what they're leading up to, which is what we're talking about today and what we've been seeing uh, since last March. And it, it, people should understand that in our calendar, that's been resurrected, if you want to say, this whole COVID thing literally started on the Spring High Memorial Day. There's four of them each year. Mm-hmm. And that system, which I have verified in other books, and I've given the proof of it, that it happened. This whole thing came down on that day. And when that happened, that kicked off the, this one particular dream that I was given, that I was constantly given for one year, for about a year, uh, a couple times a month. And I knew what it was about. I knew that some bad things were going to happen in the world in some future time. And I knew it was going to affect the entire world. And I knew that people would be arriving here. And I knew that at first it would be about eight or 10 people. And for years I put that out of my mind because it was like, well, you know, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, who knows? You know, I, again, I don't believe my own press. You understand? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't allow myself <clears throat> to, to become like that. I have to literally be dragged into it to see it. So, you know, that's how this works with me. And um, when that happened, um, you know, I saw these people pull me up and we were talking and they were like, hey, we are on our way. We're falling back to your position. And, you know, we're bringing our RVs and we're doing this and we're doing that and we're going to put all this together and we're going to do this. And I, I was like pretty shocked, actually, because the whole COVID thing started. Like, literally, things started coming down on that day, which I think was March 13th. Uh, of March that, of 13th, yes. Yep. Yeah, and then um, right, yeah, right in there, the, the day before or the day, March 12th or 13th, I can't remember, but it was right right there is when it kicked off. So, you know, again, not believing your own press, but you're, you're at least uh, uh, looking at it and saying, well, eh, it's a pretty high probability that uh, this, this all boom came down right on that day. And not a week before, or two weeks later, came right, and then and then every memorial after that, since till till this this, this the last one, there's been escalation after escalation that happened on those memorial days, and it's really difficult to sit back and go, ah, it's just coincidence, you know. And uh, so, you just like was it coincidence that, like I said, in in 2010, uh, is when the whole land of meat and honey thing started being. Published, so it got published early 2011. The whole drive with me, uh, bringing it to a whole nother level, and how I was prompted to do that happened in 
late eight, end of 2009, early 2010. And so there you have until the sign of Jonah, which is absolutely the sign of Jonah, which was August 21st, 2021, 20, uh, 2017. Right, right. Um, but then later, I wasn't even thinking about this at the time. After that happened, which I knew was a sign of Jonah, which I knew was coming because in 2014, he told me that's what was coming, the sign of Jonah. But I wasn't sure exactly what to look for because I, I just didn't get into the depths of it and forgot about it and I put it away. Um, it's really because I forgot about it put away. It's not that I don't understand what happened with Jonah and Nineveh. It's, it's, I just put it away and I didn't want to think about it. Um, so that, that's basically what happened. I, we were forward in, in 2017 and then someone came to me at that time. It was the, the other guy that uh, was helping with the calendar all these years and who found most of the, the final data. Um, basically came to me and said, Hey, look at this. Um, you've been doing this since when? And I told, him, well, you know, 2010, it's called, call it 2010. He says, well, there you go. You got seven years to write here. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and he knew I had papers out there and stuff and, and podcasts about not only, not only, um, not only Jacob's trouble, which is three, seven year periods. He went through one, right? Then you have two more to go through. Um, so seven and seven, then you also have, uh, the parallel, uh, story of Joseph, seven years of plenty, seven mm -hmm, years of famine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how I would teach people. That's how this is going to go. The, the Christians only got the last seven years, which they then, the, that prophecy cuts that in they half. They cut that in so, half, yeah. Rapture yeah, and which pre rapture, I, of course. <laughs> yeah, which, which we're going to get into because yeah. I, I think. I think the rapture is going to be a culling, but yeah. they're, they're, they're basically, well, when we looked at this and he said, do you realize that look at our, the revised calendar, look at the updated, the corrected calendar, look at when, uh, because I wasn't correlating Gregorian calendar dates with the Enochian corrected, Enoch, or corrected creator's calendar is what I call it, and what he called it. So uh, I, I wasn't correlating those dates I just go by the one. Um, so, because I felt, you know, it really screws you up when you try to do the both. Okay? You know, it's what's, what's so interesting about this is that in 2003, I went on shortwave radio out of um, a network in, in Oregon called Christian Media Network. And in 2004, I began working with two other people who were hosts on that show on what we were calling the Lord's Calendar, which was essentially trying to figure out exactly when these feast days fell originally and how we established Sabbaths again. Now, we went through a number of iterations with the calendar. I think we got close to something. We got, to, got it down to, it was effectively a lunar calendar running 20, 28 days each and then inserted in that were what were called mystery days, days that were not on the traditional 28-day cycle. You might call them rest cycles or uh, interregnums between calendrical cycles. But in, this, was in, this was 18 years ago, and we were digging through this then to, to have a calendar that we could use prophetically, because that's what we were working in. The show was called The Threshing Floor, and it was, it was biblical prophecy, but it was all from the standpoint of what you would call sort of a reconstructed fundamentalist perspective of, of, of prophecy. It wasn't rapturist. It mm -hmm. was more along the lines of, yeah, we're going through the Great Tribulation. You're not getting off this rock uh, and and going up into heaven for three and a half years while everybody else gets a hell beat out of them. So, you know, <laughs> you know we kind of, on one level, we were really cutting against the grain at that time because most of the people who listen to prophecy are coming out of evangelical, fundamentalist, Baptist, uh, Pentecostal traditions where, where all of that's taught as, as doctrine. So it's mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because we kind of were we were sort of dancing in the in the same flames together, but not knowing each other. Because you talked about Michael Rude, and I remember coming up 
uh, you know, that anybody needs to waste their time with at this point, except to say that um, many false prophets pro- populated the airwaves back in that period. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they're still a lot of them are still going strong, but um, but I think like I was saying that we're we're definitely <clears throat> had that seven year period. I think we can look back at that now and see yeah. that 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 August twenty first was going into the new age and. And uh, then when we look at the next from there, 2018, 2019 through 2024, which mm-hmm. what happens, right? right. Comes, we, come to, we come to April 8th, 2024, which is where uh, that other uh, almost the same eclipse happens going mm-hmm. the other way, putting an X like I show in the book. An X uh, cross my, right across. Yeah. There's yeah, two and, of them. And what, what, That's the and amazing. It felt like. Go ahead. It felt like right over each the cross of it, the center, <laughs> falls right over. What state is that? I think it was in Indiana, but it's a uh, it's uh, Little Egypt, which is funny because in all my books and stuff for many years, I was always telling people that America is New Egypt. Yes, it is. And you know, and also at the same time Moab. But you know, I won't get off into any other strands here. But uh, basically. Like, like you were saying, we we look back now and we can say, all right, that that's the seven year period because here's the sign, um, and 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 almost everyone agrees with that, whether they're like new age or whatever, that that was definitely a sign, uh, going into the next age, and then uh, which is Pisces, right, to Aquarius, right, which is which is funny because that's what uh, that's my other friend who used what used to be Christian said was showing me that the Yeshua talked about that, saying that you're going to move from from there to the water barrel. You know, look for the man <clears throat> carrying the water. And, uh, you know, back then men didn't carry water, so he wasn't talking about anything terrestrial at that time. But it, it is interesting to, to look back at this stuff and look at what's happened in the last 19 months or so. And, man, it's really difficult for me uh, to, to just say, ah, no, you know, this isn't the end time. I, 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 I'm fairly convinced that we're in that at this point, and I'm not easily convinced of those things. Uh, so. Yeah, no, I came to it reluctantly, too. I was like I had, when we talked a few days ago, and I said, you know, 2017, I recognized that eclipse as something otherworldly, spectacular, and dramatically meaningful not knowing at that time exactly what it meant. But the somberness of that day was the somberness, I will say, of a holy day. Mm -hmm. I will never, ever forget that day because it felt like the entire world had gone silent. I mean, the the normal noises were going on. The, the, The world around us was spinning. My particular disposition that day was one where I was sensing the solemnity of what was occurring. And when I watched the eclipse, and you know, I go over this endlessly, my listeners know this, it was profound. It was literally to me watching the clockworks of heavens shift, which is the yeah. only way I've ever been able to describe it. What I saw with my eyes, because I was looking through a tinted glass um, I have a protector guard on the on the um, sunroof of my car, and it's tinted. I used that to occasionally glance up with my eyes, even as I was filming it with my camera. And I have to tell you, my eyes and my camera never agreed on what exactly was going on in the sky, but it was not an eclipse. It was literally something moving in the heavens. It was spectacular, yeah. phenomenal, sobering, and spooky. Definitely. I mean, I actually, um, because of certain things in the prophets and whatnot, I actually warned everybody on, on, in my circles to draw the blinds and just mm-hmm. don't be part of, you know, because there's there was other things that I found that I thought could play into it. So I thought better safe than sorry. Who cares? And, and uh, you know, we're, we're warned during the times of indignation to stay indoors. Uh, which is something like I, I have shown and proved uh, that uh, Moshe was given and it was never rescinded. Uh, and, 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 and the Jewish religion is breaking it, that. Isn't it interesting 
who we wound up in March of 2020. I met some of us, me, me especially, of three months locked down, literally pretty much locked away in our houses. It, that, that's uh, that's what somebody here said yesterday. You know that uh, that that's happened, and it, there could be a reason for it. You don't know what's out there. I mean, to to a certain extent, and uh, why make uh, if you're being protected, why make it harder on them? Right, <laughs> down the protectors. But uh, but yeah, you know that th that's what I think this whole thing is. It's it's uh, the uh, dark side's great reset. We you were we were we started this con conversation talking about that video I, I sent you I yes. sent it out there I couldn't believe it I mean it was hard to sit you know in chunks an hour at a time sit through six hours of it but I gotta say that everybody on this planet should sit through that 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 movie yeah, and uh, for those of you who don't know um, I'll post a link for this wherever you get this show it is posted onto my patreon site as well because I put it up for our people there to watch I know a few of them did go through it. It is six hours long. I think it's called The True History or The Lost History of Flat Earth. It has really very little to do with Flat Earth. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot to do with the specifics of Flat Earth, but the stuff about the mud flood, which is, again, incorrectly named. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, you know, but I think that all plays in uh, to a lot of stuff because I remember you talked about the mud flood many years years ago when we first met, and I didn't know anything about it at the time. And I did look into it, and I couldn't make hide or hair of it. Didn't make sense to me, although I had a great exp a lot of experience with uh, the aftermath of it growing up in New York City, and and uh, you know being around the buildings and down in the basements and the sub basements. Yeah, and, and yeah, the being all those buildings. Uh, even around the world, because I've traveled the world, so even around the world, you see it. these buildings where where they have these windows that you know you got your window, your normal window, which is real tall, you know, seven, eight feet tall window, whatever, and you have a, a quarter window sticking out of the sidewalk, which makes absolutely no sense. And and you wonder like why do all these buildings in New York or, or and around the world have you know they, like this stupid window? And then when you go inside and go into the basement, they it's not there. Sub basement, yeah. and then next to the window, you'll see a door that's blocked up, and mud floors. And and for years, when I was much much younger, and I saw these, I was I was perplexed. I was like, "What in the hell? Why would anybody do anything like this? You know, it doesn't make any sense." And I, you know, you put it out of your mind after that. You know, because uh, what the hell? I don't care. But it's really weird. And uh, but now, when you watch that show, and now coming all this way with everything else, I've 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 studied and. And learn, uh, and these these idiots, these evil idiots, calling this thing the Great Reset, and as a joke, I think, to everyone, um, because the people on this planet uh, have no idea. I don't think what that reset really is. I now personally believe, uh, especially that's why I think everybody should watch that show because of the high technology electrical that they had mm -hmm. the electrical grid system worldwide that they had which also proved they should were showing that also proves that it was one god one religion everybody was uh simpatico worldwide had to be if everyone was using the same electrical system uh, free electric and and it was pretty amazing and the guys got pictures that i i cannot believe i've never seen before and and uh, pictures of emptied cities would, that can't be in the middle of the day. San Francisco, Russia, you know, France, different places, Germany, uh, completely empty. Uh, and, you know, then it starts making sense when you, if you know about uh, the worldwide system of what, of the children, uh, of, of the orphanages. Orphan trains, like, yeah. He, yeah, and, you know, it really made sense when the guy was saying, look, look at all the books after 18... 40 that were written all about orphans. All children's books were written about orphans. The Little Rascals, yeah. it was all about orphans. Yeah. I, I remember seeing that growing up. Charles Thinking Dickens, what? you know, just, just take Dickens' work as an example of an English author, but you have it in the American literature, too. And right. we have this, we have this strange hole in the middle of history, especially here yeah. in the United States. It's almost like something spun up 
in the mid-1800s. It was like the world came alive again. And there's like these little clues, the more you look at the, I hate calling it the Tartaria thing. It, it's a bit more tidy. This is, this is a much messier narrative, but we'll call it that for the sake of, of convenience here, that it looks to me like everything stopped and then it restarted again. And the people themselves, when you look at these photographs, and the Civil War photographs are very, very illustrative of this because uh, you have photographs of people who seemingly look completely out of place. They look mm -hmm. dazed. They look like they're not comfortable with where they're at. Moreover, it doesn't look like a war zone. It looks like a cataclysm. I mean, what the hell kind of cannons did they have in the mid-1800s, the 1860s, they were taking down buildings the size of these things. It looks to me like something went off and these people woke up in, in the middle of this dystopian nightmare after something restarted. It was almost like they restarted the computer and it booted up and there was all this fragmented software running. Right, but there's masses of missing people. That's the problem. Yeah. So when you look at that, and then also in that show, which I thought was really fantastic, he showed, you know, the liquefaction of the earth and how these buildings probably sunk in. But what he doesn't touch on or what I would, what, what hit me was um, that, you know, again, because when I'm looking at anything like that, I can't not think and remember what the prophets have said. And when I look at that, I say, bingo, there, that's what it looks like. This is exactly what Jeremiah described, that after it's all over, the, his people, the remnant, the ones that are saved through it, are going to walk and they're going to find towns and cities completely empty and they're going to reoccupy them. That's what he says. So, and that's exactly what happened in 1840, because in 1838 or whatever it was when this happened, um, Everything had to be repopulated, like that guy says. They had, the, they had the orphan trains, and they took them all around the world and repopulated areas with all these kids. And, you, you know, all, most, of, most of the adults seem to be gone. He shows pictures of all the, uh, uh, all the big factories that are still there. But what got me was that, was that the buildings, all, all these buildings sunk. And he shows proof, pictures, remember, of them excavating excavating next to buildings and going 25 feet or so down back to the sidewalk. So there's proof in that video, in that, in that movie uh, compilation. So but what got me was all uh, how's that so now you got to ask yourself, like I did, why would that happen? And then later he shows, I think it was in that, he has another video that's eight hours long, another one that's eight hours long, uh, and probably sh the people should watch the other one first, and then that uh, the, the lost uh, history of uh, flat earth second. But uh, I can't remember which one it was in. Um, but he he shows uh, Japan, I think it was, which had uh, our, uh, earthquake and the, it, it turned the earth to liquefaction. So there were cars and trucks half into the, uh, half in, sticking out of the ground, and there were big buildings that were went down into the ground, but they were all, you know, looking like the Leaning Tower pizza. They were mm -hmm. all like yeah. bent over. So, and obviously, it would, it, would, it would be asymmetrical. It would not be symmetrical. So you have to ask yourself, why was it symmetrical? Then I thought it, it hit me that I already understood from the prophets that there's going to be a culling. They can call it a rapture all they want, but they're a food source. So... There's going to be a great reset, a culling, which I think is going to be a culling, whether it's a massacre and uh, uh, they're just killed, everyone's killed, most people, or they're actually taken somewhere. I'm, my money's on taken somewhere. Um, there's going to be a culling. So well, here's, there's going to be a, here's something interesting. What, well, the hell is, what the hell is going on right now with all of these, all, all these job openings that are... They can't fill, we can't fill jobs anymore. It appears to me, and this is highly speculative, that we're actually leaning into a curve here where people are beginning to disappear. That there is, Very well. 
a calling yeah, taking you're not, place. Yeah, you're not the first person I've heard that from. Yep, that somebody else said that. That it, it's it, all, all that could be it. But the mass calling, I thought from watching that guy's thing. How are you going to get everybody out of, out of those buildings, out of the city? Because most of this is in cities, right? So, because uh, that's where the population is. So, how are you going to get everybody out of those cities? Scared people out of those out of those buildings, out in the open where you can call them. If you if you if you look at television and you look at the movies, we both know, and I think everyone listening knows that that the free will system of the creator exists, and therefore they always have to telegraph. Their punches. They always have to telegraph what they're going to do, mm-hmm. so that you, so that you can ignore it. When you ignore it, then they have tacit consent over you. That's how this works. That's how this entire system works. Uh, they're pushing the envelope now. They're going to go over the line, and it's going to be the end of the end of the game for them. Which is why those days are shortened. Probably it's probably them shortening them. Uh, you know, not for us, but because they just can't help themselves. Uh, but. If, if this is what's happening or calling's happening and the prophets and Moses and the creator with Moses told you, you know, and then Yeshua said, you know, when these indignations coming, you know, you got to stay in your house. And, and the Hebrews, the, the, the early Hebrews with Moshe was, was told, you have to stay in on the Sabbath day. Yeshua said, you better hope this doesn't happen on the Sabbath day, right? Right, right. Or in the winter. I could tell you on our calendar, it happens on the Sabbath day and in the winter. So, because it's right there with Daniel's 1335th day. So, when when you look at this stuff like that, and I, I had to sit there and wonder, like, how did they get those people out, out into the streets to call them? Because it's kind of like the wraith when you watch, like, say, Stargate Atlantis. Um they scared the crap out of everybody uh, by other means, uh, usually some kind of a tectonic or uh, vibrational frequency, blah, 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 means, you know, however. And then people come running out of their dwellings, and when they do, they get pulled up by their technology uh, and uh, swept up, basically, and and um, uh, changed, right? Changed, uh, you know, like a rapture, I guess. And, and they're taken. Uh, why? Because they're a food source. It's a culling. And so... Why are why do why do people not think that they're showing you what's going to happen? I mean, when you look at that, that's how I take it. So, how did they get those people out of the houses in the cities? They probably have some technology that vibrates the buildings and shakes everything, which causes liquefaction, which causes the buildings to start coming down, and you have people coming out like freaking rats. Mm. Where you're able to call. That's an That's how I saw it. Yeah. That's you know I'm just thinking through it. Why is the building sunk? symmetrically it can't happen not in nature not around the world not everywhere there's no way not even within one city much less all these cities so we know that can't happen so why did that go down symmetrically why because someone doesn't want to mess up the infrastructure because they intend to use it and and we saw in that in that in that video that long video right how how they intended to repurpose everything and create a new history line and create all these little bits of history for us to read and believe. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I just thought it was pretty amazing. But this whole reset thing, I think that's what it is. I mean, we have the Georgia Guidestones. You have a million other things that everybody looks at as individual pieces. And sometimes they rope it into a whole thing like, oh, world depopulation. Well, that's true. You know, or different, different things like that. But it's probably a culling. You know, and, and again, if you go to the um, prophets, that's what the warning I got. It showed that it's coming from the north, and it's coming from the sides, and it's coming out of the mountain. They're, they are a great force that comes with such speed that it overtakes mankind. Their faces are red, and every uh, the mankind's faces, hearts, and fail with fear, blah, blah, blah. You heard all, you know it all, you know all this. Mm-hmm. So. You know, and then they come out of the mountains. And the Hebrew says, out of the mountains, which means out from inside, which is probably exactly. Stargate. Yes. You know, so, um, so we have out of the mountains, we have from the north, right? It's going to be uh, probably articulated or uh, from the north. And, and, and it says that these, these unknown entities are coming from the land, ma- a land mass in the sides, at, at the sides. At the sides. Which is, yeah. At the sides. Now think about that, because we know 
that outside our ice containment ring, there's more land masses, right? But that guy, that guy with that eight, that 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 that, that six-hour show, eight-hour show, whatever it was, uh, of, of the lost uh, history of, of, of the flat Earth, he showed, and not only him, but the scientists from South America also showed that there's a massive, massive continent uh, way further out west off yes. the coast of California. Yeah. That's probably, to my estimation, by looking at his maps and his ideas, which probably obviously aren't to scale, but it's probably way further than fishing boats could go. So I'm going to say somewhere between, you know, five and five to 7,000. Yeah. You know, Something like that. Five, 15, 16,000 miles. We don't know right. because so we if, don't actually know. We're at the mercy of cartographers and people who have mapped the earth obviously for their own purposes and yet we have all these other maps floating around out there that seem like some kind of historical anomaly you know even what's going on with the north pole and what goes on with antarctica and how, right. how we tabulate all that but this right. concept and if this is if this is from the other uh, side you think about it mm. that land map is to the side of us. So the world we know, that landmass, which is almost the size of all the, our continents, or at least the size of North America, is on the side. And the prophets say it's coming from the sides. Now, and, and the problem is when people keep saying, well, it's coming from the north. No, because what people have to re remember, or at least come to learn, is that. In ancient times, uh, w at least through all the ancient texts, there's no cardinal direction. The north was the dark place. Right. Yeah, but north the north is under. Yeah, that's why you, you, and you have that. You have the king of the north and the king of the south in the Old Testament. Right, and but Daniel. those aren't those aren't Russia land no, masses. No. Those north, because if you go out tonight. And you point your finger straight up. That's north. That's what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. That's north. The north star, the pole star. Why does anybody connect that? How could the pole star be north? Right? It's not north. But Canada from here is north. Right? Well, no. no. You go if you go if if you go now, go and research cardinal directions good luck finding out really who came up with that they're, they're, they're going to come up with all kinds of extraneous information about uh, uh magnetic the magnetic poles and you know the magnets and and this and that but it's pretty difficult to find out okay in the biblical times and not that long ago they they actually believed north was straight up in the dark uh place in the dark space is, so where did the rest of this come from? Where, where did this lateral, this, this horizontal movement of north, east, south, and west come from compared to that? So when, when you're looking at the biblical stuff, north is straight up. So if this is saying it's coming from the north, but that the enemy is coming out of the sides, then it's being directed from the north, which is up, which is who knows who the hell's up there. And, uh, you know, the fallen ones, they're somewhere. And, uh, that's how you have to look at this. So, so this thing's a lot bigger, and it's not just, you know, China or Russia, you know, or some aggregate of you know all the different countries coming against uh, Israel or coming against America. Uh, you know, it's it's far bigger than that uh, when when you look at this stuff in that in that way. And that guy's, I think that guy's video did a great job. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So. Um... You all probably are going to have to watch that video. Maybe I can, I've considered going in and pulling out some of the uh, salient points of it and isolating it. I hate to take away from the content, but it's voluminous and some of it isn't on point. Um, where we get to the place of understanding what you're just talking about is, I think, I think we kind of dance sideways into that in a lot of ways. Where yeah. 
you, you kind of triggered something with who does the calling. And back in 2011, at the beginning of this show, the show was originally called Exotica. And when it became Off Planet Radio, I was doing a lot of work over the whole UFO thing, you know, which obviously you get into the aliens and abductions and all of that. And it's, you, you do tilt into a fringe area with that. There is a truth to all this, but it's not what most people think it is. Right. I interviewed a female who had extensive contacts, both with entities and also with intelligence agency operations. Uh -huh. And her name was Karina Sables. The interview was actually still on the website to this day. It survived everything. And what Karina told me at the end of that is she said she had had repeated visions of people who got on board ships. And she said, this is the deception that's coming. People are going to be deceived into thinking they're being saved when, in fact, they're being taken. So if you mm -hmm. remove the entire UFO narrative from that, it's a very accurate view. And this woman was very visionary. She told me a lot. We spent a lot of time talking and sharing dreams and visions. It was very obvious to me that she had, she had experienced a fair amount of, of, of open vision into what we're talking about now. And so this, as I've gone through the last... 20 months, certainly the period from 2019 at the um, solstice, um, which was when I sort of cracked this thing open. We at that point in time were two years out from the, the eclipse, the sign. And at that point, we're getting <clears throat> massive amounts of of energies coming in, being tracked by radio tele telescopes um, in Europe, and specifically in Eastern Europe, we're getting these massive cosmic blast waves coming through the sun. We are starting to getting getting unbalancing of our um, magnetic system, our 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 grid. Um, the Schumann resonance is starting to shift. And this is all kind of like a, if you think about timpanis rumbling in the background as the cadence to open this gigantic opera, that's kind of what it felt like to me. Those distant drum beats that all of a sudden made more sense once we got to January and February and certainly March of 2020. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it was, it was something was very imminent. Uh, at that time, um, which I, I think I was even saying, but it, I did, it didn't expect exactly what, what happened to happen. But, but now, again, looking back, like you're saying, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of obvious. I mean, there could be a couple of things, I guess, but as much as I think about it, you, you know, you were talking about the, um, the, uh, the shot everyone's getting, the, the jab. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, at first you got to, you know, you, you, we had to sit back and think, all right, what's happening. Stay away from these people. You don't know what it is yet. Uh, um, that's how, that's the stance I took. Um, you know, better just stand back. You know, that's, that's a, a military way of thinking. If it's, if there's a possibility of, uh, some kind of chemical biological thing out there, mm -hmm. then and you don't know it. You can't prove it yet. Uh, then everybody puts on Mop 4 gear and stands around in the heat and sweats, um, you know, until it's it's uh, yay or nay. Um, and that's how I, I kind of took that because we didn't know what was happening with that when when that finally became available to people. Um, I guess it amazed all of us, right, how, how many people went running out to do that when there was no evidence of anything bad actually happening. But... Man, that goes back to the the NPCs. I think you know right there the the soulless drones. Yeah. And so so and and again, if you remember, that's my argument for the soul, soulless drones was 
that it's 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 like the NPCs right in a, in a game. You you you, it would be a pretty boring game. Or actually, they wouldn't be able to get you to go their way if there wasn't uh, a mob of a lot more people going that direction because they know souls are naive and souls like to get mm-hmm. along. Yeah, and and uh, go along to get along. And uh, so they need to put those soulless drones here in mass so that they can get them moving in one direction or another. And what does that do? Like a magnet kind of pulls all the souls along with it, uh, or a lot of them. And there's a few of us out here screaming like this, going, you know, no, no, don't go. But uh, but they do. So I think we have the answer on that. So the next question for me is, I'll be about you, but are they are are especially now that we see what's in this thing, uh, which I I I I am sticking with that a lot of it is the black goo. Mm-hmm. Uh, in mm-hmm. there, yep. and uh, so is the jab. Yep. Uh, is it making them zombie candidates for uh, a larger, uh, more terrestrial culling uh, of everybody else, or uh, you know, because look what's in there, right? You have probably the black goo is the graphene. I think it's the graphene. I, I know you don't, and a lot of people say no, the graphene is separate. I personally think that they just used the graphing name and put that the goo in there. And Well, that kind um, of is what I think, too. I don't think strategically they can call it whatever they want. There's nobody that has sophisticated instruments to analyze the vaccines at that level. Right. Because right. But graphene they, oxide is exotic. It's also nanoscale. So even a scanning electron microscope isn't capable of detecting it. Right. So, so imagine now, now that that woman, and actually not just her, but uh, a few doctors, have now found that little sentient-looking creature in there that they could, that's actually got a name. It's called. You know what the name is? I just found out a few days ago. It's called Hydra vulgaris. Oh my gosh! Can't make this shit up. Hydra. It's Hydra. Hydra. We're talking. Yeah, we're talking agents of Shield here, and it's funny because if you ever watched that Agents of Shield. <laughs> Thing, crap is in there. This 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 stuff is in there in a different form. You know, they call it something else. Well, they say it's an alien stuff in there. If you watch that that TV series V, uh, that one I gotta say, after rewatching it here a couple weeks ago because uh, we were talking about it, I said, well, I have it, so let me watch it from years ago. And again, you have to come forward to be able to look at something and, and have all the answers. Years ago, when I looked at it, I said, well, this is probably kind of one of the directions they could possibly go. And you forget about it. But now go back and watch that TV series. Was it uh, 2009 TV series V? And if you really pay attention and really listen to every episode, they go through line for line, detail for detail, from the beginning of COVID to in the first, and there's two, uh, there's, there's two years there. Uh, two seasons, they they in the first season they line out the whole thing with this this whole thing. I said the word, sorry, I didn't even say that. But uh, the, they go they go they go through the whole thing, line for line. It it was so unbelievable. It's hard not to believe that they made that whole entire show just as a free will get out of jail free card. It, I don't even believe anymore they made that show for entertainment. There's no way in hell I'm going to believe that that the, the that movie, that show, uh, and and the dialogue in it is, is was just out of some writer's head. No way, because if you go back and watch that, you will be absolutely amazed how they go along in their dialogue and they go right down the line, right down to the goo, right down to how it attaches to cells. I mean the whole nine yards they go through there and in the second season they up the ante because now the v leader in that in that show is not as worried about controlling humans through her little uh flu shot uh but now she's on to now she's on to uh, getting her scientists in that season uh solely 100 percent is all about uh, getting her scientists to to locate the human soul and extract it that's that's the whole thing. 
And and there's no way. There's no way those two seasons were made for anything else other than No, because it just dropped away. And by the yeah, way, yeah. it's interesting. I went online. I went to Amazon to try and view V, and it has been removed. Really? Yes, as of Monday. You got to be kidding me! Because no. I just, just, um, I just paid for it to watch it within the last week and a half, two weeks. It says not available. And I have, yeah, I, I have Amazon Prime. I, I, I went into my Amazon account because I was willing to even pay for it, you know, whatever. It looks like you yeah. can probably get it on DVD. But as, yeah, of, I, I as of Monday when you and I talked as a warm-up for doing this, I went out and I went, well, I might as well grab this and look at it. And lo and behold, Amazon, I went into season one and it said, not available, not available. Went to season two, not available. Wow. Yeah. That is, that's, <laughs> well, I told a lot of people, well, it's, it's like, it's like that, uh, lost, uh, that, that, that other, uh, uh, YouTube, uh, movie we're talking about the, the lost uh, history of, of, of the flat earth. Mm -hmm. Um, I found, uh, somebody sent to me, I guess it was up for, uh, a, a, yes. a little while, not long. It was and up then for it a went little down. Day. And then I sent it out and within two days it was gone. Yeah. And then everybody was coming back to me going, yo, I can't find this anywhere. So we had to go looking around and find it somewhere else. And uh, I guess it keeps getting uploaded. But yeah, th there are certain things like that that, wow, I can't believe they took the V thing around. But I mean, Hydra, Bulgaris. You can't make this up. I mean, th this is, and, and here's, get this, get this. I just watched a scientist guy uh, today talking about this. He, he shows that it's immortal. I'm not. That's not hyperbole. He he says you can you you can divide it, you can cut it, you can do whatever you want, and it regrows another one. So by cutting it, you just made two basically, and so they're saying it's immortal. It's called Hydra, and I mean it does look like that. It's some crazy looking thing. I don't know if you've seen the videos of it, but it's it's off the hook. I mean, if there was ever a reason to stay away from anybody who who got this shit, it is this. I mean, the, the black goo, the sentient thing, uh, you know, I, I can't prove that exists. I, I tend to believe it does, but, um, you know, there's, I think smarter people than me uh, found it and believe it does, and I know, I, well, you I know, know that. I came from the black goo thing kind of as a progression. In 2010, in April of 2010, was that famous... Um, oil platform in the Gulf of Mexico, the Deepwater Horizon, which... Right, yeah, you were telling me Which about that, yeah. leaked, you know, how many, I guess, millions of gallons of oil out into the Gulf of Mexico. And then on top of it, they used this really weird stuff called Corexit, or Core, right. core Exit. Yeah, <laughs> Core Exit. Core Exit. But there was something about that event. It, I began researching it. I did a show at that time was threshing floor, and I broke down BP, deep water horizon, all of the etymology behind it, the numerology behind it, how these corporations have all this imagery attached to it. It goes from BP oil to the Vatican to uh, the Pentagon, and all of these connections, and this sense that there was something ominous about what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. And Several years later, I started to be aware of the work of Harold Kautzvela, and mm -hmm. I had a chance to interview him for two hours. And he makes a convincing case for the existence of this alien black goo, as he calls it, of being this sentient substance. And my sense of this is because I look at things metaphorically, I look at things cryptically, and a lot of times in, in allegory, shades of things. But I saw 2010, and that event in the Gulf of Mexico was that something was being released from the earth, something dark. And then encountering Harold Kautzvela and discussing this more, and 
listening to the narrative in the background about the black goo, it sort of worked its way into a lot of other things that were going on. For instance, Howard Kautz Vela did significant research into mad cow disease, which is prion disease, which has come up again in the context of COVID-19 as well. Right. So we have extensions of conversations that go out a whole ways. In 2005, 2007, because I was on shortwave radio then, we were talking then about all these mysterious deaths of these immunologists connected to the whole prion mad cow thing of how these immunologists, these biologists were just suddenly dropping dead, you know, men in the prime of their lives. And so it looks like there is like some kind of connectiveness between the black goo conversation and the viral conversation. And then now we're back into the whole, um, place where we are today with this program which wants to get everybody on board to take into their body something foreign very foreign and something that the more that we look at this we're going how is this not the mark of the beast I mean I did a prophecy show last spring with my old partner from the threshing floor and she's I'm sorry but she was blind as a bat she couldn't see this, no matter how much I tried to lead her up to this. Yeah. I mean, now, and, and honestly, I know there's a great division between, we'll say, God's people out there. But I'm seeing churches, they're actually opening up their doors and having them come in and give jab parties inside the church. And I'm like, I don't think it gets any more close to... Um, you know, basically the apostate fallen church at this point, if you're doing that shit. Oh, right. Come to church and get the Ripley. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's, that's off the hook as well. So, yeah, it's, you got a, you, you got a question. Is it, is it just, at first I thought it was a, zo- a zombie Ripley jab, you know, and then uh, I'm trying not to say the Charlie Victor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Try not to say the c word. No. So, so, <laughs> so or or my other question is, you know, or are the jabbies uh, of the Ripley tracked for the culling? Because we know they're being tracked. We know we absolutely know that mm-hmm. because we've mm-hmm. seen. Yeah, you've seen the guys, you know, standing next to smartphones and and the smart TVs. Oh, it's and, even worse than that. There's actually somebody, and I downloaded the document. It's on one of my devices. There's a patent out there that shows you what's inside of the serum in terms of um, the capabilities of doing um, uh, contact tracing. That's actually oh, yeah. well, they're, technology. They're definitely trying. You, you definitely did. You see the Russian that Russian guy mm-hmm. that that found that website on the dark web, I guess, uh, and he shows it. He shows the website, and he clicks on. Some woman's name, and it's showing it's showing that they're they're, they're tracking the biochemistry of the body, uh, the time mm-hmm. where they are, sleeping, their heart rate, you know, the whole biochemistry, all right there. And he clicked on it. He showed it to you right there. That it, look, this this woman is three thirty in the morning. She's in bed. She's sleeping. Her heart rate, and so all these people, uh, that number that's coming up on smart TVs is being tracked. Uh, and I'm guessing for two reasons because they're tracking. I I personally thought at first that they were using the world population and this could still be true to some extent uh, to to speed up what would take 20 years to do in two years um, you know have that large pool which is why they needed which is in my mind months ago I was thinking well that's why they need a first shot a second shot a third so you're shot, talking about shot. putting together a human bot network basically uh, well, just testing. I, I was wondering at first if they, not so much anymore, or I mean, it could be, who knows, but the, if you're going to do a test, you, you say you want to make a serum of something uh, for yourself, and time is short because you know something's coming. You know something very bad is coming, 
and uh, you have your yours and uh, all your beautiful people uh, the, everywhere in the world that are attached to you. Uh, you're one of the bad guys, right? You're one of the evil elite, and uh, you guys need, you know, uh, some kind of serum uh, for something, and you don't have the time. So what would you have to do? We have to do trials, right? But you don't have the time to do trials with a thousand people, five hundred people, whatever at a time. Even if you use uh, this drug company, that drug company, this one, this one, five of them, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't have the time. But if you use the world population, which again, you and I do not believe the seven billion people. But no matter how many there is, it's a lot more than a thousand. We do know that. So if you're going to do that, then you would use the entire world so population. You, or is- uh, let me translate what you just said. We're taking the testing, which would be normally a, a small number, thousands of people over a long period of time. And, and we've condensed that. We've taken a very large pool of people and done it over a short period of time. And so basically... What we are in the middle of right now is beta testing. This is this is we'll say beta code. It, it could be. It so, could, it could easily be that as well. It it can still be what we've been talking about as well. It can be all of um, this. I, I. It could be all. Of, so and but not only are they using all the people, but they're using what five companies using five slightly the, different was, variants. That was my point uh, all along. Since when did? pharmaceutical companies cooperate with each other over intellectual properties of an exotic variety? And, yeah. and I mean, we, sure. we know that, Office. yeah, we know that um, Moderna was directly funded by NSA. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just out there on the books and, and nobody can ignore that. And so we wind up th- with this massive testing system that goes around the world with four or five different variations, we'll say. And the test populace is a large majority of the actual population of the Earth. Right. A target of sentient sentient souls, theoretically. Or, and this is where it gets dicey, And we touched on this when we last spoke. What if this, aside from everything else that we've talked about, because I'm taking nothing off the table, but I think you said it best when you went, these are souls that have made their choice. Right. Right, so it's twofold. I -hmm. mean, Mm -hmm. you're you're choosing your God by doing that. You know, by by being fearful and running out and doing that, but at the same time, they're doing what they're doing, um, and it it just it seemed logical to me that 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 you know early on, this is before I knew about the goo, this is before I knew about the friggin' hydra vulgar. I, <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, like I'm like what? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, and and the fact that it's immortal. So this, you know, this that new information for me kind of really broadens what I already thought was almost too broad to, to, to wrap your arms around. Uh, but yeah, it is kind of hard to, to just negate uh, that, that, that they're doing something possibly for themselves, not that they're just using everyone else as the test bed to do something for themselves, to narrow it down very quickly to something they can use without killing themselves. So it, th- that's just off the top of my head. You know, that, that just, that's how I, I originally, many months ago, viewed this, as, as by looking at what's happening. And I'll tell you what else bolstered that idea, uh, that hypothesis anyway, uh, or theory. No, it's a working hypothesis at this point, because what, because what happened? I, they went into it thinking that I know they would do it. You, you, everybody knows. They, they went into this thinking that they were just going to get at least 75% of the population in the world just running out there and lining up uh, and with their arms, you know, out. And, and that just didn't happen. They, they tried to make it look like it was happening with all the fake mm-hmm. hospitals and yep. centers and, and with all the, all the media. They tried, I tell, to make it look like it happened, but, but it wasn't happening because you had a lot of people going out there with their video, with their phone, going, look, the hospital, this hospital's empty, this hospital's empty. I did empty. it. There's I no- did it. I have a major medical center um, three-quarters of a mile from my house here. 
During lockdown, I routinely went by that hospital, which, by the way, had this giant white military tent outside of it as a triage center. Yeah. There wasn't a soul anywhere yeah. near that hospital. That hospital, I have never seen that hospital that empty. Hospital, right. by right. the way, which I was in a month before COVID happened because I got sick and wound up with uh, an exacerbation of, of uh, bronchial pneumonia. Right. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at, they were doing that. All right. And that went nowhere. That backfired. But then, but four or five months ago, six months ago, possibly, they started getting apoplectic. Mm-hmm. You, you started seeing it. You started seeing from the, from the fake president all the way down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you even started seeing Delta Tango out there telling people out of nowhere, all of a sudden he was gone for how long? And then all of a sudden he's popping back up doing these little rodeos he does. Yeah. And, and he's out there. Oh, better get the, you know, better get the Ripley and, and, and telling everybody to do that. And, and getting booed, by the way, for the first time. He did, he did, yeah. He, his own audience booed him on that. But the, what I'm trying to key on here is that I was noticing that the apparatus from top to bottom was not nervous, but borderline apoplectic. Yeah, they were. They, they, yeah. they were saying really stupid things and trying really stupid things. And then after that, and I knew how it was going to go. After that stupidity, I knew that they were going to start putting the hammer down or saying they were going to put the hammer down, which they didn't have. And we see the, the worst case of it in Australia, of course, and, and, you know, and, and in Israel. Uh, amazingly, yeah, in Israel, right? Israel is uh, yeah. literally genociding itself right now. It's, it's literally performing what will wind up. The present population of Israel is what, about 8, eight million? Yeah, if the vaccination numbers are right, they, 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 it looks likely that if what we think is going on, they'll wind up, they'll wind up with six million dead. Oh, I, I mean, I don't, yeah, maybe more. I don't wish that on anybody, but it, it's, it's, it's an irony that it, it's crazy. But again, how many years ago, even with George Ann, back with George exactly. Ann, yeah, I, I went in the whole thing about who they, who, who the apparatus was there. And, and, and who they really were and where they really came from and what they were really doing. So, you know, this is not new to me that I, I just really didn't expect the people to just line up like, like drones. But, again, it could be 80-something percent drones there. So, fine, let them go. Uh, let them get it. But uh, th- this is what I was seeing, that they were, they were really and, – and we're all seeing it now, right? Now they're talking about, oh, you're not going to be able to – you're not going to be able to – wipe yourself, you know, with toilet paper. Yeah, not only will you not get the toilet paper, but we'll stop you from wiping yourself. No, you know, if, if you don't get the um, um, Yeah. You know, I mean, it's getting just, it's getting like a cartoon now. So it, when you look at this, that shows desperation. And yeah, this... to me, uh, somebody asked me, why do you think they're desperate? And I said, if I had a guess, I'm going to guess that whoever's running things from the north and whoever is coming in from the sides. I had a meeting with them and said, we told you we needed this many. If we don't get this many, we're going to take all of you to make up the difference. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we get into Jeremiah, where Jeremiah says that they're all down in their little deep underground bunkers and something bad was happening to them. Mm-hmm. All the kings mm-hmm. of the earth, yep. mighty men of the earth, all that, right? The whole, right. you know, you know, and, and and something very bad was happening to them, and they were like, well, just let the whole place fall in on us, because, you know, being crushed to death would be better than what's happening, or what's going to happen. And that's how I, that's how I read it. I, I, I was looking at, at, at their insanity and, and how they were acting like, uh, like freaked out teenagers up against the wall uh, with not enough experience and wisdom know how to get themselves out of the crap they got themselves into. Uh, and, and now just throwing, you know what, against the wall, like monkeys, you know, yep. uh, trying to, trying to just make something stick. <laughs> and, well, and, and, I, and I think the other factor of this is that they know they don't have much time. 
Oh, right. we're, Again. we're late in Again. 2021. They only have, they only have two more years. <clears throat> if yep. everything that you believe and I believe is correct, if these, if the if the sign that ushered in this period is resolved with the eclipse that occurs in April of 2024, then we can say that that ends this period. Something happens. Something happens. There is Mm -hmm. something that intercedes. And the prophecies are pretty clear about this, that that there is a shortening of time. We've talked about it on this show as the bifurcation, whereas time both speeds up and slows down at the same time. How that happens Mm -hmm. exactly, a little difficult to explain, but there's people out there that get it because I've had people say to me, I'm experiencing this. It's like... Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you look at time and you go, wait a minute. What day is this? Right. And didn't I just say that the other day that I yeah. was experiencing that myself? And then a couple of the other guys here uh, came out and said, you know, it's Friday already. I, I, I keep missing one or two days a week. It's like they just don't exist. Like, what the hell is going yeah. on? Yeah. And they even said that. I, I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. Cause this I was, is it. I've also described this as the effect you get when you skip a rock on water. Basically, when you skip a rock, it skips very long distances, and that's what time's doing right now. It drops down. There's that brief, very brief moment when it lands on the water, but it has enough kinetic energy that it skims back off again. And if you're really good at doing this, you can get four, five, even a half dozen hops off of a a rock when when you flip it across the water. And visually, mm-hmm. for me, that works as kind of a metaphor that it's very fast at one point. It stops completely. It pecks back up again. But there's something missing perceptually. It's like you, if you went back and you could minutely remember it, somehow or another, our consciousness, as relates to temporal navigation right now, is being course corrected. That's kind yeah, of I don't know. kind of how I view it. It's so it's like trippy. As in if, if, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said it's it's trippy. It's strange. Like like as in if those days were not shortened. Exactly. No yeah. flesh would be left. Exactly. So shortened is could be sped up. Absolutely. But the track yeah. is now shortened because you sped up. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's a. Uh, really cool way to think about it. And that could very easily be because I'm telling you, I have my creator's calendar, you know, I have a a actual printed version of it. And every single day I move the magnet over, you know, and uh, like, you know, like clockwork, I I make sure that I'm always keeping that and looking at it and and watching for the days of Daniel, days of Noah, and and tracking with what's going on. So it's important to me. And I swear, this year, I don't know how many times I'll go back to it and move it and think, you know, all right, I'm, I'm good to go. It's uh, Tuesday. And then a few hours later, somebody's saying to me, well, you know, it's Friday, so what are we doing for this or that? And I'm like, Friday? What are you, what are you talking about? It's Tuesday. And and so, but I know I move it every day. Mm-hmm. And it and it's not once or mm-hmm. It's happened to me so many times where I, I thought, and I'm calling the other people here saying, you know, hey, uh, Oh, so dude, what's today's date on our calendar? You know, because I, I I somehow lost track. I don't know how I did. And they're like three days ahead. You know, well, they'll go back and look at theirs and be like, well, I think it's it's Friday. So it's it's this day, you know. And so I, it, I, I, I was experiencing, I think, and without understanding what was happening. What I was saying. It is... Um... The times that we're in right now are sobering, and they're uh, confusing. There, are, you know, I suspect that that there's a lot of we're almost in an inversion. Like it's almost like the world of backward. Everything's backward now. Things don't make sense. You know, we suddenly have all these supply chain problems. We're surrounded by ships loaded with cargo that can't seem. As far as you know. 
Trump, they're, they're, well, who knows what they are? That's the other point to this. You know, there's something sitting out there. What is it? But we've seen since since last year, the supply chain slowly failing, slowly failing. Things aren't showing up in the pipeline. Um, nobody's even talking about the economy. Nobody's talking about the inflation levels. The press ignores it. The government's not saying anything about it. It's almost like gas prices have doubled. Uh, Nobody acknowledges any of this because the program, program CV, has absorbed every last bit of attention and energy. It has sucked all the air out of the room. It is the largest spell of mass hypnosis probably ever woven over a connected civilization in its epoch of time. It is that deep and that dark. Well, that, that deception, I guess, that uh, everybody's waiting for. So, um, and oh. only a few won't be deceived by it. I guess that's, I, I really do think you're seeing all the different uh, prophecies that, you know, I've pretty much deliberately ignored for a long time, especially the Christian ones. Um, mainly because of the idiots who are always talking about them. But uh, it's kind of, Sobering, like you say, to, to, to sit back and think, well, it's, it's just too difficult to believe that this is not what he meant when so-and-so said this. Uh, well, Mike, Nobody oh. wants to believe this, and I didn't either. And I mean, truthfully, I've studied this my whole life. And I was on radio for five years doing prophetic radio and going through the Bible. And, and quite honestly, the more I got down the rabbit hole, the less I believed the system that I was using to decipher it. I had to walk away from this completely to the point where I just was like, fuck it. I don't believe this anymore. I had to go that far down the line to be able to come back to this and then start to examine it from a broader perspective, which brought in a whole lot of alternative history to things that I wasn't prepared to accept because it was outside of the doctrine and dogma of what, you know, we're raised in in religions. Right. It's hard to break out of that paradigm. Um, I, I haven't experienced much of that, but it, I, I have with other people, you know, pretty much everybody mm-hmm. I've ever yeah. taught. Yeah, you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of um, we'll say, reformed or recovering Christians and people that have come out of those I'm still recovering I'm still in recovery I have my I have my chip but um, some days they will push you right right to the edge it's tough on it's definitely tough on people I mean you know it's uh, that's that's exactly why I tell people that read my stuff and and um, you know they just oh wow this is exactly what I knew it was and I, I'm, I've gotten thousands and thousands and thousands of the same emails and phone calls. Like, it's almost from the same person. <laughs> you know, and yeah. all saying the same thing. This is what I've always been looking for. I knew it was out there. I couldn't find it. You know, a million different things. And, and but, but, uh, it wasn't me that went looking for them. You know, I'm not, I've never, it's not in the Hebrew mind to proselytize. You know, it's just not part of it. And, and, and so it, 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 it worked because I didn't do that. It worked because you leave that up to the father and the source, you know, let the source take care of it. And, uh, whoever's looking and, uh, you know, seeking, they see a fine kind of a thing, uh, then they'll find it. And the ones that don't, don't. And that saves me a lot of arguments. Yeah. You know, um, I think all the, pro- not- if you look at the prophets in the old Testament, they were, they were pretty reluctant. Almost all of them, you know, they were, under, yeah. they were mostly under duress in, in doing that. I mean, Jeremiah, especially, I think of Jeremiah, I mean, yeah. you know, but even, you know, even Daniel, he has to come out of a pretty comfortable government position to do what he does. Yeah. And, you know, you get to Hosea and I mean, the poor, the poor guy's married, he's married to a whore and he's living in some horrible lifestyle. And I mean, God's just showing him all this stuff. And 
being a being a prophet didn't look to me like a, a real good career move. It looks yeah. like mostly it's it's grief and sorrow and poverty and um unless you're Elijah who gets to ride off on some exotic craft, uh, doesn't look like it's good, got a good end either. They sort of yeah. sort of died. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely not the, the job so, most people would want. And it's, so let's do this. Um, anything else you want to put out on this on this side of the show, and then we'll we'll, we'll jump over for a little bit with our um, with our subscribers. Um, anything you want to put out, you know, on your website, your books. Um, Final words, final thoughts. Oh well, you know what? I didn't even talk to you about that. I don't. I, I meant to tell you that I would send you. Uh, you need to uh, email me your address again. Um, I'm sure I have it somewhere, but uh, it'd be easier. And uh, I have the hopefully my final book um, <laughs> that I just. <laughs> I appreciate that because I'm in the middle of writing my first book and I'm going, I'm never going to do this again. Yeah, yeah I'm telling you. And uh, this one has been in the works for about six or seven years. And I, I retranslated and reworked, actually reconfigured uh, the four books of the Essenes. You've seen mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Um, So it's on Amazon now. It's uh, Cool. The Essene Law. It's called the title is the Essene Law: The Everlasting Agreement, of uh, books one through four, and so it's one. It's in one book, but uh, yeah, that's available now, and that's uh, that's going to probably clear up a lot because a lot of people have read those books and they were horrifically convoluted and and um, I'm not going to say mistranslated, but it, it, not greatly, not excellently translated and uh, definitely a lot of things were I don't think on purpose misappropriated I, I actually uh, lined it all out in the forward of the book uh, what I did and why I did it and and uh, but I, I really do I, I did it because I finally um, went through it years ago and uh, after many years of prompting by students and friends and, uh, to get into it because they believed it to be part of the everlasting agreement, part of the mm-hmm. law. Uh, and I just blew it off for many years, but I finally did it. it took a long time, and uh, <clears throat> but it's getting some good results back. People really like it. And I think for people that move over to or back to this original uh, lifestyle, if you want to call it, yeah. Uh, yeah, for those of you out there, uh, if you want to go to Ancient Hebrew Learning Center dot blogspot dot com, um, the books are books are listed there. You know, you would want to go through them. The Land of Meat and Honey and the Greater Exodus uh, are the two underpinning books, as I understand them. Those are the books that I I read. Some of these I have not read, but those were the two primary texts that introduced me to you. And yeah, that's. That's the old blog. Oh, so, that's the old blog. So you have a new site. Uh, well, yeah, I've had the same site for quite a while. It's just a- ahlcglobal.com. Okay. ahlcglobal.com. And the books are there, but I, I've been telling everybody just because Amazon has been really slow on... Um, it used to be another publisher. They bought the publisher up. Yeah, I know. And ruined it because, and I mean, since this whole, you know, uh, Ripley thing started in March, uh, for, for an author to get books from them to, to you know, to resell, um, it's it's really difficult. It takes a long time. So I've just been telling everybody, just go to Amazon and just get it there. You know, but um, but if they want to there, I got the podcast there that you can join and, and uh, listen to a bunch of podcasts. And, nice. Nice. It's a nice site. Yeah, I did know this. I, I pulled up the old address, though, is what came up when my fat fingers were dancing across the keyboard. So <laughs> we'll leave it there. We'll have links in the little box below wherever you get this podcast. And um, we'll convene this this side of the conversation, which is public, and step over to um, talk a little bit more with our subscribers, our patrons. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you, and it's getting damn close to where you need to figure it out. 
Love you. See you the Love next you. time.